Greetings friends, it's me Wayman, and this is a video response to how to defeat Calvinism. And I find these debates interesting because they're always going on between uh, Protestant groups and uh, just come on to say it's fairly easy to do single-handedly uh, to defeat any theological system uh, if we only apply our minds and actually read the ancient literature because, like Solomon said uh, in his text, there's nothing new under the sun. You say, wait a minute, what do you mean? Well, here we have um, one of the oldest uh, texts probably that we have from the ancient Near East, Mesopotamia, the Epic of Gilgamesh. And I'm going to read a section of this, and you'll see uh, ideas from both uh, Jewish literature and early Christian literature literature and New Testament stuff so this stuff has been going on so it was not uh, uh, Jacobus or, or, or John Calvin uh, but right here in both the Epic of Gilgamesh and as we'll see later in the Iliad so uh, Enli of the mountain father of the gods had decreed the destiny of Gilgamesh so Gilgamesh dreamed, and Enkidu said, The meaning of the dream is this. The father of the gods has given you kingship. Such is your destiny. Everlasting life is not your destiny. Because of this, do not be sad at heart. Do not be grieved or oppressed. He has given you power to bind and to loose, to be the darkness and the light of mankind. He has given you unexampled supremacy over the people, victory in battle from which no fugitive returns, in forays and assaults from which there is no coming back. But do not abuse this power. Deal justly with your servants in the palace. Deal justly before Shamash. The eyes of Enkidu were full of tears and his heart was sick. He sighed bitterly and Gilgamesh met his eye and said, my friend, why do you sigh so bitterly? But Enkidu opened his mouth and said, I am weak. My arms have lost their strength, and the cry of sorrow sticks in my throat. I am oppressed by idleness. And it was then that the Lord Gilgamesh turned his thoughts to the country of the living. On the land of the cedars, the Lord Gilgamesh reflected. He said to his servant Enkidu, I have not established my name stamped on bricks as my destiny decreed. Therefore, I will go to the country where the cedar is felled. I will set up my name in the place where the names of famous men are written, and where no man's name is written yet, I will raise a monument to the gods. So here, Gilgamesh, for this section, runs towards his fate, and run towards, runs towards his destiny decreed by Enli, even though Gilgam uh, Enkidu, his, his friend, um, acting as a Joseph-type motif here, interprets his dream, Later, when Enkidu dies, Gilgamesh questions eternal life, and he goes on a long search to find the answer to that, and he meets um, Utnapishtim, who is living forever in the far away, as they called it, kind of a Garden of Eden type place, and he asks Utnapishtim how he gained eternal life. And um, you can read the rest of the epic for yourself. Now we're going to go to another version uh, in the Iliad, uh, book 16. And um, uh, I'm going to need to find that. I'm sorry. Because here we have Zeus um, being troubled by the death of Saradon, whom he loves. And he tr he thinks about uh, changing the fate of the uh, fighter. Uh, Hera uh, discourages him uh, from doing this. Uh, here it is, uh, book 16, line uh, 432. Uh, Looking down upon the two men there, the son of a crooked minor Cronus, uh, 
pitied them, he spoke to Hera, his sister wife. Alas, Sarpedon, dearest of all men, is fated now to die, killed by Patroclus, the son of Menotitis. I probably said that wrong. My heart's divided as I think it's over. Should I snatch him up while he's still alive and place him somewhere else in his rich land of Lycia, far distant from this wretched fighting, or have him killed at the hands of Menotitis' son? Oxide Queen Hera then replied to Zeus, Dread son of Cronus, how can you say this? The man is mortal, doomed long ago by fate. Now you desire to rescue him from miserable death? Do as you wish, but we other gods will not agree with you. And I'll tell you something else. Make sure you remember it if you send Sarpedon home alive. Take care some other god does not desire to send his dear son from the killing zone. So, so here you have questions. Also, um, later, when Achilles and Hector face each other, Zeus weighs the fate of both men in the balance. Hector comes up short. And so there you have very bold statements in ancient literature about the destiny and the fate of man. Hector runs towards his fate. He's a human being. He does not know his end. So he does his best, and he throws the spear at Achilles, still thinking in his mind he will overcome. Achilles, being human god, knows the fate of Hector, and knows he himself will die, and uh, runs the spear through Hector, and uh, for honor and glory, chooses to die young, when Achilles could have just went home because he had a choice. He had a choice. So, uh, it's very interesting. Take care, friends. And remember, everybody's thinking alike. And somebody isn't thinking.